Hello, today I'm looking at an Anchor 65 watt slim power adapter. Comes in this very uninteresting box. If you'd like to see more like this, there's a playlist of the various power adapters where I compare them for power in and out, as well as efficiency to see which ones are the best performers. Let's open it up. So it comes with a little user manual. I can see the most important thing in the box so far, they're a happy, not happy card, and eh, well, we'll see. This is a Series 5 device from Anchor, and so when we look at the user manual, we can see they give us a little bit of extra information. So they actually have average active efficiency in here. They have the efficiency at low load, 10%. They have the idle power uh, consumption. We also have some information about how each of the ports work. And then it gets kind of confusing because once you start combining ports, it, well, turns into a mess, as most of these things do. This power adapter does come with an extra piece. The charger itself is a desktop charger, so it comes with a little strip so that you can actually stick it down to a surface so it doesn't flop around on you. You can see we have a 20 watt USB-C, a 45 watt USB-C, and two USB-A ports. And it does come with a power cord and a little uh, Velcro tie. One of the nice things about this is, you know, the power adapter stays exactly the same, and you can just buy different cords like this and use this in different countries all around the world. The packaging weighs 61 grams. The power adapter and power cable weigh 244 grams. Quite heavy, but again, this is not designed to be portable. Just for comparison's sake, the Anchor Nano 265 watts 115 grams. And for a quick size comparison, they're different. On the bottom of the power adapter, we can see the uh, model number there. So this thing is also called a 543 charger now, um, if you look at it on the website, but they they had a different name for it, the PowerPort Atom 3 65 watt slim. And then it also has that A2046 designation. Uh, but we can see our six for DOE efficiency. We can see it as the CUS for a TUV for a safety listing. We can see there's a dim blue LED that's lit up right there. So one of the things we see for our initial power on is we have reasonable uh, idle power consumption, low power factor. THD is not great, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. So overall, the initial specifications for it doesn't, don't seem too bad. So one thing we see that happens is our THD shot up to a very, very large number. So this is making the waveform of the current different from the waveform of the voltage. So the higher this percentage, the more different those things have become. This is another way to view the information. What we're looking at here are the harmonics that are being generated by this device. So ideally there would be no other extra bars here. Okay, so plugging into this first USB port, we have our red LED over here. So we can see that we have five volts on this screen. So if I go ahead and push the button, we'll see this voltage up here change. So five, nine, six volt PPS mode, 11 volt PPS mode, and five volts again. So right now we're plugged into the 20 watt USB-C port. So we can see we have four different modes available. Five, nine, six, and 11. So now we're on the 45 watt USB-C port. So this one has five volts, nine volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, a 16 volt PPS mode, and a 21 volt PPS mode. The 20 watt port is more like a, you know, a nine volt. So you're gonna be able to charge your devices at a little bit of a lower, lower pace. It does have that 11 volt PPS mode. So it'll charge, you know, around that 20 watt pace for phone, smaller devices. So another thing about this device, these USB-A ports are five volt only. So you're not gonna get any QC modes with these ports. So right now I'm pulling the 45 watts out of this port, which is the maximum it's rated for. See we're at 20 volts and 45 watts right there. And over here on the input, we can see we're using about 49 watts, so not bad. We can see that the power factor is very low, so that tells us that this device is not a power factor corrected device. And that also means our THD is gonna be high and our peak current's also very high. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take this port up to overload and see what it can do. We'll take it up to 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, and it's off. And it did recover to the five volts. So it looks like that single port you can pull about 55 watts before it shuts down, so that's not too bad. You know, you're almost achieving the entire output of the device for that single port, so you can get close at least. Now let's go ahead and plug in a second USB port. And actually one of the things I wanted to check before I do that, let's turn this to a different voltage mode. So we're on 15 volts now, I just picked a random one. When I plug this in, I wanna see if that resets. And it did. So now we're back to five volts. It was very fast though, so this device has to now re-request its new higher voltage, which we can do while this is plugged in. 
Okay, right now I'm loading the second USB port down with 20 watts. I wanna see how many watts we can pull out of this port before it overloads. Let's go up to 30, 35, 36 watts, 37 watts, and it's off. The other port did not shut off. 36 watts is the maximum you can pull out of this port while you're using this other USB-A port. So these ports are sharing some power. Okay, so now we're running 35 watts here. You can see my green shadow. So that means I'm pulling 20 watts on my other load tester. It's off screen here. And then I have another load tester. We can go ahead and load down the USB-A port. So right now we're pulling about 10 watts off of this port, 20 watts off of one of the other USB ports, and 35 watts off of this USB port. So it is delivering the load as it should, power all the different USB ports, no problem. And the overload conditions vary depending on what ports you have plugged into this device. Okay, overall, when we look at this Anchor 65 watt power adapter, we can see that it struggles with harmonic distortion, and we can see it struggles with power factor. Both of those values are very low for a basic power adapter, and we can see that the end result of that is that the power quality score ends up being on the lower side. Even under that idle condition, the THD was pretty high, so it just didn't perform as high as some of its peers. The efficiency was okay. Remember, this is a Series 5 device, so it is a little bit of an older style device, even though it is a newer product. But we can see it did top over 90% for efficiency, so that is the positive side of it. When we compare this to other devices, we can see that it's, it's on the low side. So it's got an 87 for an overall score, and that idle score is pretty low. The idle power consumption is good. It does meet the DOE efficiency requirements, and the efficiency is high enough to meet the DOE efficiency requirements, but the power quality is not fantastic, so it ends up scoring quite a bit lower than some of its counterparts, like the Anchor Nano 2 65 watt, which is a newer technology device, and also getting handily crushed by the Amazon Basics 65 watt power adapter. Of course, those are both single port devices, and this four port device can handle charging many, many different devices all at the same time. So there are definitely advantages and disadvantages. In the 65 watt class of devices, the scale's a little bit different than those 100 watt adapters because the 100 watt adapters typically will have a power factor correction system installed. In the 65 watt adapters, I've never seen one that has that feature. So these devices tend to fall way lower on the scale because they don't include that feature. So on a graph, we can see what I was just talking about. This device falls somewhere in the middle for its overall power performance. And then when we take a look at the idle power performance, again, it also falls somewhere in the middle because it just doesn't have that really, really low idle power consumption we saw on some of the Samsung devices. And the power quality of those situations is just not as high. Okay, overall, this Anchor 4 port power adapter isn't terrible. In terms of power quality, it's certainly not the winner. There are better options out there. This thing's trying to be a lot of things, and what it really seems to do is fail at being a lot of things. You know, we did see in their user manual, they had some efficiency specs, and they are exceeding those numbers. Their idle power consumption was right on their number. So the positives for this one, though, you get four ports. They all work. I'd say the ideal situation for a device like this is if you have to charge four lower power devices. But for phones and things like that, this is a great device to keep those devices topped off. Might not be the fastest charger on the market, but it's going to do the job. All right, well, let's apply that tested sticker. So now we know it's been tested. So next week, we're gonna have these two U-Green power adapters. Both of these have the exact same model number. Something's gotta be different. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.